My mother used to say to me, where are you running? I don't know, I say, but I'm running. I don't know why. I'm still like that now. I was in a very musical family with five kids, and it was right after watching the Beatles as neighborhood girls got on the phone, what about an all-girl band? We were the earliest female group that rocked hard, didn't play like girls, like tinky tinky, you know, imagine the influence of Detroit. My brother had set up Mickey Mouse coming in. An offer was made that he wanted just her. Wow. It devastated them, and it devastated me. I didn't know anybody, it didn't go anywhere. It was really, really lonely. Then I would say Susie Quattro came out of the ashes. She was the first and broke the ice and kicked the door for us gals. I've never seen a woman with an instrument in a band. At that time, rock was a male oriented business. She has transcended her gender. She is now just considered an icon. A lot of girls that tried to be Susie Quadro, but when it's in the DNA, you can't fake that. Certainly her position in being like the first woman leading a band, I mean, hits like that. This woman has so much energy, so much talent. She could have done anything. She started expanding her career. In fact, that was hard on the marriage. Strange how people don't like you to step out of a box, do they? And I refuse to be boxed. And there's a whole chunk of growing up that got missed out. That's the person I'm trying to address now, that little girl. Yeah, I, I wouldn't tell her not to go. Just stop running so fast. She did far more than show that women could play music. She showed us that we could be who we were. Because with Susie, there was never a question. Susie had a dream in Detroit, and all these years later, she is still living that dream. That is amazing. <laughs>